Here is a detailed guide on how you can make simple, fast, yet effective notes for your lectures and classes. Hey everyone, my name is Faye and welcome to my channel. Here are the timestamps for everything that I'll be talking about in this video. If you enjoy watching videos about art, academics, or lifestyle, then feel free to subscribe. In this video, I'll be talking about the best note-taking method for classes and lectures. And my dog, Miki, is joining me because she is barking and whining downstairs and she wants some attention. <laughs> if you're a student and you frequently browse YouTube or Instagram, you would have definitely come across those aesthetic notes. And you definitely know what I mean. I'm talking about those notes with the pretty banners, the different colored themes, cute illustrations, fancy fox calligraphy, and so on. Now, I don't know about you, but for me as an average everyday student, I just can't be bothered to make my notes that pretty. It's just not practical for me. Now, I understand why people would want to pretty up their notes and make them a little bit more aesthetic because it just makes the whole studying process just that bit easier or more fun and less boring. But I find that if I do those kinds of notes, I spend more time doing the notes than actually studying them. <laughs> so for me, I like to do something I call the improved Cornell notes method. Now I'm saying improved because I took the regular Cornell note taking method and tweaked it a little bit to make it more practical, at least for me. And your version of the Cornell notes could be different from mine. If you are not familiar with the Cornell note taking method, here is a short introduction of the original format. You basically divide your page into three sections. In the largest section, you will write your main notes and points using concise sentences, preferably using lists. You can also write down what your lecturer said in class here. In the left column, you will write down any questions, comments, or keywords. And at the bottom, you will write down a short summary of what you have written in the main part. Now, here is how I took the original Cornell note-taking method and made it more practical for classes and lectures. Separate the page into three sections. The main section is dedicated to one subheading. No matter how long that subheading is, I'll compact it into one page. For example, in my biology notes, I wrote down the structure of the mitochondrion in this page and only the structure of the mitochondrion. I didn't add any additional information. By constricting yourself to only one page per subheading, you prevent yourself from writing down every single thing and only noting the important bits. Unlike the original Cornell note-taking method, I do not write lecture notes here. I'll explain where that goes later on. I'll write the name of the subheading on top of the main section. And like the original format, write the information down in point form or in lists. Here is an example. I like to draw flowcharts for any processes or information that needs to be revised in chronological order. In the bottom section, during class, write down what your lecturer or teacher said, or what is on their slides. This is the biggest change I made to the Cornell note-taking method. Instead of writing down a summary of that page, write down what your lecturer or teacher said or any additional tips and extra information that you want to highlight and remember. Here is an example. By assigning a section at the bottom just for lecture notes, you won't need to add lots of sticky notes here and there to highlight anything your teacher said. It's clearly written at the bottom. That is why it's very, very important that you prepare these notes before each class or lecture because that will prevent you from writing down every single thing that your lecturer said. Just note down the important bits. You also don't need to write down the full notes. Just assign each page to a specific subheading. There are two benefits of assigning a main section just for your textbook or your main material and the bottom section for your lecturer's notes. 
The first benefit is that you won't need to write down what your lecturer said on a scrap piece of paper, then needing to transfer that information back into your main notes where your information from the textbook is. Usually people do this because they don't know which information goes where, so they decide to arrange it all after the lecture is done, and that's just double the work. The second benefit is that you can pinpoint exactly what additional information your teacher or lecturer said that is not provided in textbooks or the resource that you are referencing. If you have to write essays, this will really really help you because you know that most students will not write or remember the additional information written at the bottom of your page. So use that to your advantage and score those extra marks. This actually helps me a lot for my A-level economics because my lecture would say a lot of data and additional statistics that we we could actually use in our essays during class but most students don't remember or just forgot about it because they wrote it down on a scrap piece of paper that they lose in a week. In the left column and last section, don't only write down questions you formed yourself for each part of the main section. Also write down questions from past year papers. Here is an example. When you're revising, cover the main section and test yourself only using the questions written in this left column. Compile all these questions you've written onto a piece of paper. Test yourself using these questions before every study session. I've explained this very effective method of revising in my last video. So we've come to the end of the video. Let me know if you want me to make more note-taking videos or just if you have any suggestions in general. I do take them very seriously. These last few videos have, all, have been your suggestions. So just let me know what you want to see. Thank you to my 380 subscribers and I will see you very very soon. Bye bye.